Yeah, it's uh, six o'clock and I'd like to open up the meeting. Um, we just lost Paul Saruti. He's uh, gone to take care of a fire. He may or may not be back um, before the meeting is over. Um, so at this point, um, are there any adjustments to the agenda? Um, None by me. Diana? I have a, had a request today for uh, somebody wanted to know about if there's anything going on with Ainsworth Road. Do you want me to talk about that in the clerk's report or? Uh, yeah, sure. Okay. I can give you the latest update. I think I've already shared it at a previous select board meeting, but. No, nothing. She, she just commented that it's getting worse. And she okay. if there was any, any update. Okay, all right. Well, um, yeah, let's talk about it under the town clerk's report. Uh, let's see, any public comment? Hearing none. Um, I would make a motion. Um, actually, I can't do that. As, but I guess, uh, seems how we only have two of us, Brian. Um, <laughs> I guess you can make the motion and, and I'll second it and then we'll go from there. I know that Paul has seen them and signed them, so we're good okay. there. Motion to accept the uh, bills, is that it? Yep. Yep. I'll second that. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. And then, um, do I hear a motion to approve the minutes for the February 8th, uh, 2021 select board meeting? So moved. I'll second that. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. So we're ready for the town clerk's report, Diana. Oh, geez, on. <laughs> <laughs> That's fast. Okay. Um, I did get a call today from uh, the neighbor on Ainsworth Road who was at asking whether there had been any updates. He was aware that uh, there was one visit by the uh, compliance officer from ANR and uh, he said it's just keeps getting worse as far as junk accumulating. Okay, well, um, I know when I spoke to Ryan McCall, he had um, paid a visit. It was probably over a month ago. He spoke with Tanya Daigle. Um, and he gave, had given them a month to clean up um, and come into compliance with the uh, number of um, uh, unregistered, uninspected vehicles on the property. That was on the Ainsworth Road side? It was on Ainsworth Road, yeah, on the, on the uh, Daigle property, which I assume is what the neighbor is yeah. complaining about. Yeah. Um, so what I'll do is, um, uh, I'll do a check-in with him because I think it has been a month um, and uh, see if there's anything either just let him know that as far as the neighbors are concerned things are not getting better but are getting worse um, and he would probably uh, pay another visit I would imagine. Sounds like a good idea. Yeah okay so and I'd be glad to contact this the person, um, Diana, if you want to send me an email of uh, who that was, um, I'll let them know. Okay. Yeah. So what else? Town clerk report. So we've so far we've got about uh, seventy five ballots returned. Okay, which That's good. I guess it's good. I hope it doesn't mean the hundreds are going to show up on town meeting day and uh -huh. get in their ballot. <laughs> if that happens, that that happens. Mm -hmm. I mean, seven hundred and some ballots were sent out. 
Yeah. And we usually get maybe 100, 125 people at town meeting day, but since more people have ballots now, maybe they'll pay more attention. Mm -hmm. You would think that there should be more, wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah, I'd be curious <laughs> to see how it does, does turn out. I would think that it would definitely be more. Yeah, I would have guessed a lot more, yeah. yeah. So we got another We're, week. Uh, we haven't got, uh, just last week I found out that we had not mailed back our cards that go in the tabulator, uh, the memory cards. So I sent yeah. those special delivery and they're gonna turn around and reprogram them with our new ballots and hopefully send them right back. Mm -hmm. So we'll probably have uh, work to do over the weekend if we that doesn't come in in time. Okay, Robin. So um, what do you mean by new ballots? Ballots for people to fill out at oh, the- Yeah, I mean the ballots that we have created for this year. Okay. But uh, okay. Well, the cards were, that were still in there were from the general election. Oh. Since it was our first time, I didn't realize we were supposed to send those back. Oh. Hmm. And we did. Yeah. <laughs> So um, I still haven't lined up all my ballot clerks and election workers. I uh, am trying to line up some people to take the two ballot boxes to Hardwick and stay around and do some counting. Now, did you volunteer for this? I said that I would do that. Yeah. Okay. And I could be, uh, um, you know, at some point that I have a 3.30 appointment uh, with my dentist, but otherwise on Tuesday, I could spend some time at the town um, hall. Okay. Uh, I'll let you know if you're needed. Okay. Uh, I was hoping you could, or somebody, or I could ask Greg to just clean up downtown with snow and stuff. Robin and Bill, or maybe just Robin, but they did a lot of shoveling this weekend. Mm -hmm. But the, uh, there's a lot of snow that could be removed if they bring the loader down. And okay, do you mean like in front of front of the uh, old the, the the new old store? Well, you know, right along the the island there, the inside okay. of the island can be scraped down, and they could try okay. to do some cleaning up if they if they want to clean up in front of the old store. All they have to do is ask people to move their cars. And they, yeah. Yeah. Seems like the cars aren't there much during the day, but I will, um, I'll get a hold of Greg and, and make that request. Mm -hmm. I'm sure he'll and be fine. And a big bag drag in front of the steps at the town hall from the rail and back. Okay. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And actually, you know, if, if they got to that um, in the next couple of days with the warm weather, anything else that might be there might kind of melt away. That'd right. be nice. Yeah. yeah. Of course, who knows what we'll get before town meeting day. But, right. um, <laughs> but at least some of it will be gone. Yeah, I'll, I'll call them tomorrow morning. Let me make a note of that so I don't forget. Um, so Robin's going to come to work every day this week and uh, we'll try mm -hmm. to get some more, try to get ready for next week and try to get some more training done here and there. Okay. Uh, we hope she'll hire me to stay on a little bit afterwards for a few months. <laughs> <laughs> Till spring. I can't tell whether she's feeling confident or not. <laughs> um, so I have a, an appointment question to different town officials. We usually try to appoint folks, um, you know, the first meeting after town meeting day. Um, do you want me to try to figure out who's who and who to call or, or does the town clerk want to do that? Well, I don't know, you know, what the hurry is, but your next meeting won't be until um, March. It'll be March uh, 8th. Yeah. Well, March, March 8th. Yeah. So. There aren't that many that have to be called, but. Right. 
And I should be, I'll, I'll do that. You're probably gonna be busy enough with uh, this election stuff. Um, it should be pretty obvious from the town report who I need to call. Right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. And then I guess we'll see after election day what elected officials um, might need to be appointed. That might take a little bit longer because we'll have to find somebody to willing to do that too. I'm not going to worry about that right now. Oh, like auditors. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Can't yeah. do much about that. You know? no. um, so I was thinking about uh, ordering a new uh, select board handbook for the new select person. Who, uh, that would be nice. He won, but you have to pay like 40 something dollars for a download from the LCT. That seems wow. kind of, uh, cheap. <laughs> no. <laughs> I thought they kind of gave it to you as a uh, digitally for free, and then um, if you uh, wanted a paper copy, you had to pay yeah, for it. Not anymore. Oh, uh, not anymore. Oh. Do you think we should get one anyways? Yeah, we should. Yeah. I think. Yeah. So, trying to clean up some things around here. <laughs> Get you can do that them. in your assistant town clerk role too, I suppose. Right. Yeah, right. I know. <laughs> Remember how to do dog licenses again. I might let Robin do those for a while because she's really getting into it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. so, yeah, I don't, uh, counting on. Fortunately, I don't have to worry about counting for Hazen and all of that hard work stuff. Right. I'll be busy here. Right. Yeah. And I don't have to run back to the office and put everything in the state system because they don't care. It's not a state thing, right. Yeah, yeah I don't think I've, I've got to call Alberta, though. I don't think I'm going to even have a checklist to send her, but. Even mm -hmm. if I did have a checklist, I'm only going to have checked off the people who brought in their town ballots, whether or not right. they bring in their school ballots. We don't really care. We're not going to no. keep a separate checklist of those. And there might not be names on those. Is that correct? Well, they'll come in the envelopes that have a name on them. Okay. Yeah. So if I needed to, I could, could do that. Uh -huh. I could just make a copy of the checklist that I'm using now, but that doesn't guarantee that everybody whose name is on there on the checklist as having returned a ballot, right. returned both of their school ballots. But somebody could bring their school ballots in on town meeting day at the town hall and just stuff them in the box and there, there wouldn't be a name on it. Although they would do a yeah, check-in. They, they get checked in, yeah. There'd be a check-in, right. So we'll see. Yeah. And I think Steve went to that, uh, hopefully went to that webinar about how to run a virtual informational he, meeting he did i just got there was an email from him when i got home from work today and um we're going to set up a two-person um trial zoom meeting so uh, just so he can get the hang of it um oh, good some either sometime before thursday i'm glad he sent me the email because he was thinking the meeting uh, was on friday night oh, mm. so yeah, I've only sent out three or four different notices. People don't pay attention. Yeah, well. I think what I'll do also probably either Wednesday or Thursday is send out an, to the email blast, you know, so yeah. they'll have like a hot link they can just uh, click on. That would be a good idea. And maybe Front Porch Forum too. Mm -hmm. Even well, on... Do that too. Yeah. Okay. Um, just could the person who, who, hang on a second, Diana, could the person who's joined the meeting on the phone identify themselves just for the, for the meeting minutes for the record? The phone number ending in 528. Where'd they go? Uh-oh.
You scared them off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they thought they could be anonymous. Um, so did that person hang up? Did, did I get, I, I got disconnected. So I don't know if, um, my request to the person on phone, um, did they give their name? Looks like they're gone now. They do seem to be gone. Okay. All right. Well, hope I didn't scare them away. I didn't see a name pop up up top anywhere. Yeah, no, there was no name, just a, a bit of a number. Yeah. Uh, okay, so anything else, Diana, at all for? Well, I've got to uh, try to get all my recording done before I leave office. And okay. uh, then hopefully I'll be kept on as the recording clerk for a little while because that's going to take some training. Uh -huh. yeah. And I can come in probably one day a week and clean that up. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm going to, starting tomorrow, I think I'm going to suggest that Robin answer the phone every time it rings. <laughs> I, keep, I keep grabbing it automatically. And she needs to get, right. get used to all the uh, crazy calls that <clears throat> we get. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anything, nothing else? Brian, do you have any questions for Diana at all or, or Robin know. for that matter? No. Okay, I don't either. Um, I do think, um, was thinking about uh, just demoting myself to assistant clerk and maybe just hanging on to my vacation and sick leave and just carrying it forward rather than getting done totally and cashing out on that and starting over because it's probably uh -huh. be easier to not have to redo a whole new employee. Okay, well, I'm 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 fine with that, but I guess Brandy would probably be the one to have the final say on that. So, but whatever whatever works for okay. for you and and Brandy and her her bookkeeping. Um, okay, so I don't see Brandy here. Um, I didn't get really get any. She had financials for us at the town office, uh, but no kind of printed out report like last time. Um, no, I didn't see anything there. So there are some stuff down there to sign, Michael, I haven't been down yet. There is, yeah, just uh, the uh, payroll uh, okay. timesheets and the bills. Um, I'll get down there tomorrow to that. Okay, yeah. And, the, and there's a, a meeting minutes also there. Um, yeah. I forgot about the certificate of highway mileage. Thank you for signing that. I kind sure. of yeah. missed um, that in the emails over the last couple of months. They used, used to just send a piece of paper and we'd sign it and send it back. But mm -hmm. my question for you is when you did the uh, the spur up at the old cabin, old quarry road, you never added that officially to the town highway mileage, did you? No, um, it's a class four road still. Um, so it would probably, let's see, 100 feet is how much of a mile? It wouldn't be um, worth it. We don't get money for class four roads anyway. We don't, no. We, make a difference. Um, we, we do. I do still need to kind of officially register it. And I, I have this list going. Um, I'm going to connect with um, Shauna Clifford, the District mm -hmm. 7 manager, and ask her about that. I think there is some kind of official um, form, um, but it would be a fraction of a fraction. So yeah, yeah. yeah we shouldn't worry about it. It's just a class four anyway. Um, so I checked off that there were no changes in the total mileage. Right, yeah, Last year. yeah, I think that's fair. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so uh, one thing that Brandy had wanted us to um, authorized with some kind of a credit card authorization so that um, she apparently um, the you know the road crew has a credit card and Greg used it um, and now the bank wants some kind of form signed by the select board and um, uh, actually a copy of the minutes so actually Brian you and I are here maybe we can uh, I'll explain the situation and you and I can discuss it and 
I guess if we were to authorize Brandy to be have her name on that credit card, that would I think that would solve the problem. Okay. So so let me just finish explaining. Um, so the town highway crew does have a credit card, and you know they've had one for quite a while, and this hasn't been an they issue have before. Or they have Beg your pardon, they Diana. Do or they don't have. They do have. Okay. And they have had for a while now. Um, mm -hmm. And this hasn't become an issue before, so I'm not sure. Maybe it's a new form that's required. I don't know. But anyway, um, so Greg used the card. And um, obviously, a, a, you know, a bill came in. Um, and uh, the bank won't let Brandy pay for it ah. until... Um, she is authorized to be a sig, what, what do you call it? A signatory? Signatory, thank you. A signatory on the card. Um, and there's a form um, that needs to be filled out. And what one of the things that they're requiring is um, that there be uh, either minutes from a select board meeting or, or some type of authorization um, beyond the town treasurer. Um, for uh, the town treasurer to be a signatory um, on the card. So we need that by motion? Yeah, we probably should make it official by motion. You want me to do that or? Yep, no, nope, go ahead. Okay, I'll make a motion to authorize Brandy to be the signatory on the credit card for the town highway crew. All right, and I'll second that. Any discussion at all? Uh, nope. Okay, I don't have anything else other than what I've already said. Um, so um, I would, um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, good. So that's a quorum. We're good. Yep. So that'll be in the minutes and then Brandy can send that on to uh, the bank and um, fill out the form. And I think, I think we'll be okay with that. Yep. Good. Um, okay. Um, so Chuck has some family visiting and he asked if there wasn't anything burning issues uh, for him that he would like to not be here tonight. So, and I gave him permission not to be. Uh, <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> I think that's well, not, to, really not to worry about it and to uh, enjoy his family visit. <laughs> and, okay. So there isn't much of a town report. I was gonna try to catch in uh, with Greg, but they were out plowing roads. Yeah. this morning um and then i had to go to work so yeah roads have um, been good yeah good. yeah and nice I, compliments kind of trickle in um yeah. on the way the roads are being kept up this winter so it's interesting now we really haven't had a, a an icing event yet this winter which is kind of unusual um it is. yeah yeah although sounds like we might get some later this week so oh really yeah yeah um so that's pretty much it for the Town Highway Report, I guess, unless anybody else has anything to say under that subject. What do I write here? No, nothing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, nothing, nothing major to report or something like that. <laughs> so I have a, a brief um, Woodbury School update, and um, I don't think I, you know, I kind of figured I really don't need to do this in executive session with just the select board members. I know some people have been kind of, I did get a few calls about what's going on with the lease. Um, and I've spoken to different people um, who, you know, kind of see that it's on the agenda, but it's discussed in executive session. Um, but the, the Woodbury Lease Committee, uh, Norman Etkin, Patrick Flood and I met with the uh, Union School District Lease Committee um, last Tuesday uh, and we were a little, um, well, the, the meeting in a nutshell is basically that um, they, the information from um, the Agency of Education about the state statute that states that towns cannot pay anything extra towards the school district for the uh, operations of the school, um, that was shared with them by their lawyer um, at, at a meeting that the school district board had, Union School District Board. So um, what they have, um, what they suggested to us, the Woodbury, um, they um, 
they basically are going to be paying um, for everything, all the costs um, for operating the school. Um, pretty much like they are doing this fiscal year, which was the third year of the merger, um, uh, the merger lease. Um, so they'll basically be paying the town a dollar. Um, and, but they will be, they'll take over all of the financial um, expenses for the school. Um, and this is for fiscal year 22, the, this new lease. Um, okay. so, so there are some modific, yes, Diana. Did, did you say that advice came from an attorney for the school district or? No, th this advice initially came, um, and actually I haven't shared this in a public meeting either. Um, this advice came from the Agency of Education. Um, uh, I spoke with a woman named Donna Russo Savage. She okay. was, and probably still is, sort of oversees the whole merger project. And she, when I talked to her um, about this, um, she she um, passed on my conversation and email to um, a fellow named Brad James, who is the financial manager for the Agency of Education. And he um, shared his thoughts that, um, you know, as far as the agency was concerned, if there was anything that showed up uh, from a town paying for a school expense, chance that the, there was a very good chance that the uh, secretary of the agency would challenge that payment. So, um, and then, so that um, email from Brad uh, was sent, I, you know, I shared that with our lawyer and he shared it with the school district's lawyer and the school district's lawyer confirmed Brad James statement. So based, so that was shared with the Union School District Board um, in one of their meetings. Um, I don't, I'm not quite sure when, in the past, recent past, and they pretty much determined from that that they, you know, um, that they, uh, and just to keep things um, pretty clear, that they would be paying for all of the expenses to operate the school. And so this lease for fiscal year 22, there are some changes that are being made to it because that wasn't the, um, you know, the last draft that we sent to them. Um, that wasn't, that language wasn't in there. So there'll be, so there's still some work to do on the lease, um, but we pretty much came to an agreement during that meeting that this is what would happen. Um, and uh, did you get to hear that, Paul? I just caught the very end of it. Okay, so um, I'm kind of updating us on this, the Woodbury School on the, and the lease. Um, okay. So um, Norman, Patrick, and I had a meeting with the, uh, um, the Union School District Lease Committee, and they had been shared, the, they were, um, the information that came from Brad James, um, the Agency of Education person that I shared with the select board and executive session that was shared with them. Um, so what they proposed to us um, was that the school district will pay for all of the school expenses for fiscal year 22. Um, basically pretty much similar to what they've done this third year of the merger lease um, where they basically paid the town a dollar. Um, and uh, so there still needs to be some changes to the draft lease because uh, that wasn't reflected in that language and the changes um, were not part of the draft that we had sent to them earlier. So it's pretty much as we discussed at the last meeting then? Yeah, yeah well, actually, no, better. Uh, yeah, yes and no. There, there will be no contingency fund, um, no- so None uh, of that, oh wow, okay. None of that at all. It'll basically be, um, we won't be charging them or pay, you know, asking them to pay the town anything for a lease except the $1. Oh, okay. And, and they will be paying for everything. They're responsible for everything. They're responsible for everything. Are they going to be responsible for the plowing? That's um, what will happen probably. And I need to talk to uh, Brittany Curie, the, the financial person at the uh, supervisor union. Either they'll, yes, they will be paying for the plowing. This is in fiscal year 22. Yep, next um, next year, yep. And the town road crew 
um, if they wish to, I mean, we could submit a bid just like other contractors um, to do the plowing. That's not money. That's not money. Yeah, so one way or the other, they'll be, they'll be paying for it. Awesome, okay. Yeah. And then the other thing that they, um, the other part of that discussion is, is that they, they would really um, like the, t the town to basically grant them ownership of the building uh, going forward. Oh, sure. So, and we told them that we would be willing to discuss this with town residents, um, mm -hmm. explore that possibility. It would just make things okay. I know there'll be yays and nays. Well, I mean, I mean, my 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 view on that is it's 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 been made relatively clear that the voters wanted to keep the building. Mm -hmm. I suppose we could put it before the voters again. Right. This as this long would, as we could buy it back. Yes. For a buck, what, you know. Yeah. So we we discussed what the scenario might be, you know, we didn't come to any solid conclusions, but there would definitely be, this would be something, this is not for next year. This is not for fiscal year gotcha. 22. There isn't time to do that. So we have, you know, time and hopefully we'll be past the pandemic so we could actually have a real meeting, meet, meet together to discuss this. Um, yeah. but we, we'll probably start discussing it just to get it out there, get that um, thought out there. Um, and I'm not advocating either way, but um, Me either. I just I know what our marching orders were last time. That's kind of what I've been trying to do. Yep, same here. Um, and so, and I, you know, I warned them that you know we're willing to discuss this. We're you know what we would so what we would try to do is um, you know continue a discussion with the school district board, not just the lease committee, but the whole board, mm -hmm. um, and come to some kind of um, understanding, probably working out a draft. I guess I wouldn't call it a lease. I don't know what we would call it. Um, and there would definitely be conditions um, and um, from both sides, I'm sure. Um, but, um, and then we would present it at uh, select board meetings. We'd have a town hearing meeting. Um, and if town residents did not want to do it, you know, and then we'll go back to the lease. Or really, right. yep. you know, thinking about it, some there isn't much difference really. Um, what right. their 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 main, you know, some of the things that they were concerned about is, you know, like paying for the um, fire um, catastrophe kind of insurance on a building that they don't own. They, you know, there's kind of they I don't they don't feel uneasy about that, um, even though there's language in the lease that covers that. Um, and they just figure that it would make things simpler. Um, and, you know, probably it would. It probably but would. But there, I think either way, there's going to be complications. So yes. especially on the, you know, the different terms that the town um, would want to have um, with, with such a situation. Right. And obviously, um, you know, for whatever, you know, it would probably be the kind of thing where it'd be like a a quick claim deed where they would acquire the building for a dollar and obviously the town once they if they decide that they are not going to use it as a place of education that the town would get it back for that dollar um, sure okay and, and there would be all you know it would be there'd be plenty of safeguards and um you know different um understandings from the discussion that would pretty much cover the town's um concerns um, before we did anything um, and if we and if there are cons you know things in it that we don't like and and they're pretty adamant about keeping them then we'll just say um, sorry I guess I mean yeah, I hope I think, yeah and and we'll see what the what town residents um, you know and this would be an official it would be a special town meeting there would be an official vote um, it wouldn't be just a show you know like right. what do you think about this um, because uh, it would be a, the, you know, the bottom line in, in, in just exploring this is to try to keep the school as a school. Um, right. You know, and that's what I've been hearing, you know, different people um, that have called me in the past month or so, you know, um, that's their concern. Um, and they're mostly um, younger folks with families um, that really want their children to um, not have to go to Hardwick or Greensboro or wherever, and they want their children to be able mm -hmm. to go to 
the Woodbury School. So, um, so this will be kind of a um, the beginning of a process. But the first thing we'll we'll get the lease um, finalized and and um, hopefully get get it signed and be ready for fiscal year twenty two. Well, that simplifies the money part of it. Yeah, 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 and the uncertainty too. Um, right. So. Uh, so that's pretty much the, the update. Um, uh, right, I, you know, I met with Norman and Patrick and we're gonna work on um, a revised copy of the lease. Um, and I think um, some of the folks from the lease committee are doing the same on their end. Um, and we'll kind of work that back and forth, um, probably without getting the lawyers involved until we're kind of in an agreement. Right, do we all like what's there and then let the lawyer look at it. Yeah, we've already spent a thousand dollars on the lawyer. For, <laughs> That's easy to do. Yeah, I know it. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I think we'll tr try to be in agreement so that there isn't a lot of haggling with the lawyers nope. and the, the kachinking of the the clock on their yeah, end. Yeah, an expensive three, meter. Yeah, at three hundred dollars an hour. Yes, it is. Not the most expensive attorney I've, attorney we've ever paid for. No. no. Get a telecom so, attorney. <laughs> yeah. So it does feel like we're pretty close to, I mean, pretty close to an agreement. It's just working out the lease details and then okay. there'll be this process um, to, to work out something to bring before the town residents for, for a decision, decision that way. Um, and I do wanna point out to you folks, I, I know we, I, uh, there was a really great article about rural schools in uh, seven days, um, newspaper last week. Um, I have a link, Norman provided a link to it. it I would really encourage everybody to read it. It was um, kind if of- If you have the link, go ahead and email it to me. I would be I glad will, to read it. I will uh, forward. Norman sent a, an email response when I, I set out um, that has the email link on it. Um, it would be, I think, um, I might even put it on Front Porch Forum. Um, it would be great for folks to read that. It was pretty you know, there are other towns that have merged that aren't all that happy about it. Uh, they're trying to unmerge. They're trying to unmerge or they're trying, they're trying to figure out how to save their school, really. Right. Um, and, and there's a lot of good dialogue about why a small school in a small town is important, um, um, even beyond its community value. Um, so it was just a, it was a good article. Um, Okay, so um, anything, any questions about the this Woodbury school lease or the update on the school? From I'm good. I'm good. Okay. Diana or, or Robin, anything? Yeah. Questions I'm glad you might to have? finally hear about it. I, I didn't, I never understood why the whole thing was in executive session to begin with. Well, we were discussing the lease and, and the amounts of money and blah, 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 and, and um, and never really coming to a decision because whatever we discussed, we had to send back. Right, because we can't really discuss the terms of a contract and response uh, publicly because the other right. party would be listening in on you. Yeah. There, yeah, but there aren't any other parties. That's the funny part of it. Well, the well, school board is the other party. Or anything. Yeah, the I mean, school board the, is. <laughs> yeah, and these meetings are recorded. So if it was discussed publicly. Um, somebody, right. So yeah, that's why. It definitely um, put us at a disadvantage. Yes. Okay, well, well um, let's move on to the personnel policy. I'm gonna um, do my screen sharing thing again here. Um, and usually I fumble around before I get there. So <laughs> hang in there. Uh, Chuck, Chuck didn't show at the, I didn't see Chuck here. Oh, on the... Yeah, um, hang on a second. Um, let me just, yeah, so you, you are out at that. Uh, Chuck um, sent me an email. He has some family visiting down in Florida. Oh, fine. That's what he should do then makes a lot of sense i just wonder if those guys shouldn't have been out with there's probably three inches of snow on the road i had to take my pickup up there's no way the fire but i guess we'll just let them get out in the morning it's okay yeah it's uh not good and i had to one complaint from our um our regular complainer and i'll, I'll call okay. chuck about it he claims that the uh road department were was uh rude to him <laughs> when he called them today so i will let chuck call <laughs> and talk to him. I just spoke with him, but I told him I had to get back to this meeting. So I. Okay. All right. Um, well, I can imagine they weren't too pleased to hear a call. Well, the problem today, and that's why I'm not real fussy about dragging them out, it's been snowing all day. 
Yeah. And as soon as you, it snowed an inch as soon <laughs> in an hour and you're going to, there's just no way you're going to keep those roads open completely all, yeah. all night. So yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> not happen. Okay. Just so, so you're aware of it, I'll, I'll call Chuck okay. and, and pass the uh, information along to him. Okay, yeah. So let's see, let me get to the screen share. Uh, hmm. Okay, can everybody see that? Yes. Great, okay, uh, let's see, I'm gonna move you guys over here. All right, so um, let's get to where we need to be. So I'm pretty much, we're pretty much gonna be looking at the comp time um, language and then the uh, the pay scale is, um, so let, all right, so here we are, paid leave time. This is pretty much as it was before. Um, Can I X this piece out? And let's see. Uh, Okay, here we are. Um, so um, let's see. This the stuff in red um, was pretty much there at the last meeting. Things in green. There was some uh, text in green. Um, so, but the second paragraph. Um, I was trying to um, kind of add a sentence or two, Paul, to explain the year A, year B right. thing. So I'm just kind of wondering how, how you guys feel about the uh, clarity of that, that paragraph, the language in it. I, I think it's clear enough uh, with a little explanation when an employee starts so that they know what the rules are. Okay. Um, the, the, then, the, the worst part would just be, um, again, Brandy's not here, but it, it, would she have a way to track that? Yeah, I, I think she does. But yeah, we need to, there's, there's a bit of stuff in this personnel policy. I need to sit down with Brandy and go over. Um, hopefully when... when um, so, so, I don't know what Brian thinks. I'm good with this language as long as Brandy has a way to track the year the time was earned. Okay. I asked Perfect. her that today and she said she does. Okay. Because okay. again, it solves the problem Chuck had of them feel like they had to use up all that time this year. They could, they have a whole another year and a half if they earned it today to use up that time. Yeah. Okay. And then they can spread it out a little bit. Mm -hmm. And that kind of the balance between no comp time. And then obviously before they, I, one employee on his time, she had, uh, um, change all my overtime to comp time but again this under this policy that would have to be approved by chuck yeah it would yeah um I thought you were going to have something in there that it was going to be by the first of may that they had to use it up by the second year and not june 30th oh i do remember chuck saying we i remember can, that too yeah yeah we I, that change kind of, that date to may 30th so um <clears throat> Through the pay period, which includes, okay, yes, I do remember that. Um, so let me make a note of that, that they have to um, clear with Chuck the use of the comp time by the 1st of May. Um, so this is my memory work. Let me remind me if I remember right. I remember that we um, were going to, if they wanted to use up comp time as they were getting close to the end of the fiscal year, they had to, um, get the okay for when they would take that comp time uh, by May 1st to cover Correct. May and June. So there'd be That's like a two. Right. Yeah, okay. right. And remember, any time earned this winter, they have this year and next year to use it. Right. They don't have yeah. to use it by the end of this year, this fiscal year. 
Okay, so I'm making a note of that to remember to put that in there. Um, um, I'm sorry, uh, did you say they have to get approval by May 1st or they have to use it by May 1st? They have to get approval um, by May 1st. Okay. So it can be worked into the plan of whatever. Correct. So that Chuck's not left without any help. Yeah. yeah. And he isn't left with somebody taking all their comp time at the last minute. Uh, that, that was part of the issue um, right. when this came up is that, oh, I've got a week of comp time left. Let's see, there's a week left right. before the. Right. Because uh, now if they earn a 40 hours, they can carry it right over into next, you know, past July 1st. And, you know, there's no, there's no urgency to use it. Yeah. Till yeah. next year. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then, so we were gonna leave some of the bullets and take some out. And um, what I was aware of is that some of the ones that we had decided not to leave in were already in the text. Yes, so, yep. <clears throat> like this first one, an employee shall accrue a maximum of 40 hours of comp time. In the uh, opening paragraph, the last sentence says the maximum allowable compensatory time off that can be accrued as 40 hours. Right. Should I strike that from that paragraph and just leave it in the bullets? I think I just take out the bullets and leave the paragraph. Okay. That's right. right out of the union contract and that's been pretty well vetted by the labor board. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so I'll, I'll take that one out. And then the next three, I think we wanted to keep in. Uh, let me get the thing moving again so um right that's all should stay yeah yeah okay and then that last one that we have crossed out already um we pretty much will have language in that first paragraph that covers right, which that. says about using it yeah yeah okay okay it's so just it's a little more restrictive time getting to use your comp time is a little more restrictive yeah, in a good way too, though. Yeah, sure. yeah. but it, it, I think it solves the problem of our needs and their needs. Yes, I agree. Yeah, yeah, it's a good a good meeting point. Yep. Um, okay, so I'll, I'll move on. I think there's all of this we discussed last time. There haven't been any changes. Um, so this whole insurance thing, I want to go over this with Brandy. Um, and this was something that I wondered should be deleted because the town clerk and the town treasurer don't work 30 hours a week, but I wanted to, Okay. I just highlighted it with that question. Um, the only time that would, would be, you know, in the past we have had a town clerk and a town treasurer that are, that are the same person, but and then obviously right. they did work more than 30 hours a week. We haven't had for a while. So let's see, let's get to that pay chart. So I haven't been able to talk to Brandy about, you know, how, if she is able to set up um, an Excel spreadsheet that, that would be, um, you know, kind of malleable if, if there were, changes, cost of living changes, if it would change everything automatically or whatever. Right, because what we'd want to do is on that pay chart is if we give a 2% raise, say this summer, which we're not, it would raise all of those steps 2% when we did that. That way it's all, the, the pay scale doesn't get antiquated. Right, yeah. I'm and then people sure. would receive their steps on the step dates. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that could be done. Um, you know, um, I could probably check in with Skip Lindsay to see if that's possible. He would know that um, right off. And, and then, you know, just kind of waiting for Brandy to get past the, the things that are troubling her right at the moment yeah. so that we can um, get this part figured out. But I put in the, um, I put in some text here at the beginning. Um, and then I, I brought up the steps um, that you had sent, Paul, and kind of put those prior All to on one page, yeah. Yeah, all on one page. I had one question. What does EOP mean? End of probation. End of probation. So okay. if you don't, if you, if the employees left on the day after their probation ends, if you haven't terminated them, then their pay would automatically go to step so, two. Okay. And then yeah. one year from step two, they would get step three and so on. Okay. Yep. All right. Um, 
So, um, so how do you feel about the, the kind of uh, introductory text, I'll call it? Um, so I kept the step chart so far the way it has been, um, but explained that it would be used um, to establish a base pay and hiring and the hiring of an employee. Um, like when we hired Grizz, he obviously had many years of work experience. So we didn't right. start him out at step one. Um, we kind of determined, I don't know how we actually determined that, but we did. Well, it's, an, it's a negotiation. Basically, right. I say, I want this much. We're only going to pay this much. That's how that works. Yeah, I think that is how it worked. Yeah, but then we so, slot them in somewhere in the chart. So yeah. So then it was just a, an explanation of, of that. Yeah, I think that sentence. sentence looks fine. And then, it, okay. you know, if you don't aren't do a step, if we raise the do the cost of living increase, it would raise everybody's pay that percentage and the pay chart. Yeah. Yeah. We just got to be able to make it easy. So Brandy can just punch it in and it would dramatically change all those cells. Yeah. yeah. I don't know how that, how that could ever be easy. Um, yeah, well, I, I, I definitely don't know how. So. It's not a, it's not an Excel chart now. No, you know, I, what I, I'd be willing to do is go through this chart and figure out what percentage each of these are. And you could- They're about 3%. Yeah, we've well, already some of them are two something and right. That's what I said. They're really about is what I through and figured about. Right. I don't. I don't think that's necessary, Diana. I know that I've seen Just skip. Show you what uh, what the percentages are, so they don't. Because the step isn't associated with the annual increase. The step goes by years. Right. I, I would just want that so that the chart stayed valid. Um, if we had a way to raise all these amounts, if we only gave people a 1% annual raise, it would raise every cell 1%. Yeah. I know I know that can be done. I've seen Skip Lindsay working an Excel spreadsheet. Sure, so some, I, I know I can't do it, but somebody probably can. Yeah, and he, you know, he or Brandy or the two of them together um, could set that chart up and, and Brandy would know how to, to make it work. Um, that's my hope. <laughs> that that's what can happen um but and i've seen it done i mean i've just watched it <laughs> yeah yeah I haven't done it. i'm I dangerous have enough so don't don't put it near me the first yeah. thing that would have to be done is the whole chart would have to be typed in put into a spreadsheet account. correct yes it would have to be put into a spreadsheet yes yeah absolutely so um so for now i guess we'll just keep the figures as they are that's yep. um and that would be our starting date if she can do it this would be our starting date. And then from here on, if like, I think what do we do? 1% or one and a half percent for July 1st, I yeah. think um, we would have to raise this chart. So by then we'd have to figure out how to do it. Yeah. So I'm just going to write that down. I, one and a half percent for a cost of living adjustment. Um, Is that what we, I think that's what we decided. I don't remember. That sounds, that, that sounds good. That I think that's like what we budgeted for. Okay, so um, that's pretty much it. You know, we just need to go over. Um, actually, let me get to the the insurance appendix. So, I, I what I'd like to do is um, go over the whole insurance thing with Brandy. I know that we we no longer have um, the Blue Cross Blue Shield uh, Vermont Health Connects Platinum Plan. It's an MVP plan. I'm pretty sure it's a platinum plan um, also. And, and the terms uh, you know, that the town pays 85% of the premium, that still holds. Um, so I just and I, I wanted to just check in with um, Brandy about the, the insurance stuff. Um, yeah, and that's pretty, pretty much it for the and then there's the, the drug and alcohol testing. Um, there's a link to the manual. Um, and I think I have a copy of the manual and I'm pretty sure that there's a copy at the town garage too. Um, but, um, and that's pretty much it in the personnel policy where, any other thoughts on this um, other than the insurance and the, the um, getting some kind of Excel spreadsheet, spreadsheet yeah. for the, I think, can we send the substance of it to the VLCT attorney so we can get, because I know Chuck was important to get this resolved before spring maintenance. Yeah. I'd I mean, like the, other than the pay chart and some of that insurance stuff, I mean, 
I think the rest of it is ready for a lawyer review. I think you're right. I, um, I will um, kind of finalize all of the, the red and the green ink. Um, I'll make those changes and I will send it to, um, there's a person named Jill Muir at, at VLCT that's been reviewing this for us. Um, she's the HR person there. Um, okay. And uh, I'll get, she has reviewed it for us in the past. Um, I'll send it to her. Um, and uh, maybe I'll check in with Skip about that spreadsheet and um, just to confirm that, that he, that it is possible to have a chart that would function that way. Um, and then as soon as Brandy is kind of back in the picture pretty consistently, I'll try to sit down with her. And I mean, I, I would like to have this pretty much approved by the select board and, and moving forward both for springtime and for the hiring of a new employee so that we Correct. can have this to, to show to them when um, during, the, during the hiring process. Um, okay. I have one more thing. Yes. Oh, and obviously, go ahead, Diana. Under the insurance, oh, can you go back to the insurance part? Yes. Yeah, hang on. Okay, wait. Any, any particular oh, part? Uh, part about disability, life and disability. Okay, hang on. There you go. So there's um, life. The provisions don't shall apply to the town clerk and treasurer. Okay. I thought I had seen that that had been did, um, deleted. No. Nope. Maybe not. I mean, it's not really very much of anything, but it's. Uh, okay, yeah. never mind. Okay. And do you want to check out the disability too? Well, there was a. I guess I, it's all in one policy. Yeah. So. Yeah, this is kind of, Skip put this together just to have everything. It's also in the policy. This is just kind of a one page or two page uh, synopsis or summary of, of the health benefits or the different benefits. They aren't all health benefits. But. Thank you. Okay. Um, I had something I was gonna say and now I've forgotten what it was. Um, <laughs> Uh, and make notes, Michael. <laughs> yeah, well, it was it was. I lose the note. Uh, I did. I did make some notes of some of the other things I I forgot. So I'm glad that Robin remembered that May first thing because that that um that was forgotten from earlier. Um, what was it? Uh, well, it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it wasn't too important. Um, one more thing. Okay. Yeah. This is really not about the policy. I just wondered if you want me to keep doing your uh, minutes. If you are willing to do that, um, it would be appreciated. Yes, but, it would be. Um, All right. Yeah, it does save me quite a bit of time, and and I guess it's maybe after town meeting we should start looking for a. You wouldn't happen to want to be a select board secretary, would you, Diana? Well, it depends what's involved. I don't want to do charts of um, whatever <laughs> that truck stuff is, but oh, okay. things like letters and stuff like that, I could do as the assistant clerk. Okay. All right. We'll 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 discuss that in the future, okay. I guess. <laughs> um, yeah, so I can't, I for, have forgotten what I was going to bring up about this. Um, uh, uh, was I, yeah, I will make all of the changes, um, you know, get rid of the different colored texts and send it to Jill Muir. Uh, I'll do that this week. Um, she usually gets back pretty quickly, it might be a week or so. Um, we might have a response from her by the next select board meeting if we're lucky. Oh, cool. And, uh, and then when Brandy's able, um, we'll, uh, We'll finish up the insurance part. You know that she's having an operation Thursday I, this week. I, I didn't, didn't know, know what that. it was. I knew it was. Uh, to, I knew that that was the choice that she had made. I should have told her I could probably do it a lot cheaper. <laughs> she, uh, they told her at one point, like three weeks to recover, but then she was led to believe that yeah. 
because of her age in general, good. Not going to happen. It, uh, it might not be as long as long as she doesn't, you know, lift things that were more than five pounds or something. Oh, they, they cut my wrist up. I'm on week 12 is Friday. For me, it is still not far from 100%. So yeah. <laughs> older though. Yeah. Well, I hope she doesn't push it, but. Yeah, you want to go slow and heal properly. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty much it on the agenda. Is there anything else that anybody would like to I discuss? I have a couple of questions. Sure. If the school goes to the union for that dollar, what happens to that generator? The generator is the town's. That is the towns. Yeah, at least so, some of the stuff we would have to work out for sure too. And right. right now, how many buildings are on that generator? Three. The school and the school? and the fire department, the fire station, and the and the annex too, Paul. Yes. Yeah. Would it make sense to add the town hall to that, just for it could, emergency it could be purposes? Done. It could be, yeah, uh, could be done. Yeah, because the wires come all the way down to the front on that side of the building. We would just have to do a, either an overhead or an underground. Probably people would want it underground. Come up to the panel right in that corner. We'd have to put a transfer switch on the building too. Yeah. It could be done. It probably made sense to do that. I know that's the evacuation center for the school if there's a problem, so. Right. Um, Norman's, yeah. when he first designed that system, they were concerned of overloading the um, generator, so we can't run things like our compressor or the cook stoves, which they don't cook at the school anymore anyway, or the elevator. So, as long as it, we haven't had an issue with uh, misbehaving with the generator yet, so in all this time, since 20 years or so, 20 more than 20 years. Yeah, that would probably be a good be a good thing to do. And then I assume that you know, if there is a new fire station, um, that we would probably hook the generator up to that too. Well, uh, in our plan is we would have our own standalone. We'd, have be own okay. We'd be overloading the system pretty badly. So in that okay. design, there is a, a another generator involved okay. in that. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And with, with a generator, um, Robin, before the merger happened, um, actually before. We even knew that we were going to have to merge. The uh, school district met with the select board, and and the fire department was part of that meeting too. And the town pretty much agreed to take over any responsibility um, for maintenance, et cetera, um, for the generator. So essentially, the generator is has hasn't really even been. Um, it was early on. It was part of the consideration in this new lease with the Union School District, but we um, we took it out pretty pretty soon into the uh, negotiations with the always state. been for emergency management purposes exactly okay right. yeah but it is some of the stuff we would have to resolve yeah in that i mean the school does benefit if you know if the power right. goes out that generator right. keeps the heat going right. um, or and if the kids were in school it would keep a minimum amount of electricity. So um it's been very effective. It's been a very useful, very useful device. Yeah. And it, I think we put it around 98. So it's been in a while. Mm -hmm. Is the library okay. on it too? Uh I don't know that, Brian. Good is what question. on it? The library? the library annex building. I don't think it is. I don't know the answer for sure. Yeah. Okay. And left if it has its own meter, it's not. If it's fed from the school, it could be. So I don't know the answer to that. Yeah, I don't know the answer either. Larry, I bet Larry, 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 Larry would know. Yeah. Okay. And we talked about this one before, but um, on an ongoing basis, is there any chance that the town highway who plows the section in front of the town hall of fire station back drag in front of there on a regular basis? Uh, yeah, we could make that request. I mean, they would only have to do from that um, railing back through to the end of the ramp. From the okay. railing towards the old store, I would be able to shovel that much, but I can't shovel that whole. Well, also, we've got a, a snowblower now, too, Robin, at the fire station. Yeah. Which oh. we could probably get you to use if they can't. I mean, I would talk to Chuck first because I'm in agreement with you. They should clean that out better than they do. 
Because one of the problems, even with the snowblower, I don't have any place to blow it. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, I don't know how, if you, can they back drag with uh, the snow plow? I know the bucket loader can do that. It can back drag with the small truck. Small truck, okay. And isn't yeah. it the one ton that does it through there? It should be. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I know the low pro had started out this winter doing it, but it has chains on it. And they were tearing up. And, and the intention of fixing that small truck was to... Uh, um, use it for the driveways because the the, the we, we complaint at the fire stations they can't get close enough to the door right you want yeah. to include that in my phone call with uh chuck tomorrow there robin sure. i'm more than happy to because i agree with you we've had to help shovel that out before and again any real if you get a big snowfall and it's not call me or chance and we can come down with we've got a, a decent snowblower in the fire station now we'll come clean it up okay and i'm gonna be you saw our conversation with the the fire academies course i will when they give okay. me an updated schedule i will get it to you okay told them, Very good. Uh, right now everything's good except march 2nd because they're going to be voting in there correct right. yeah so and i'll get that to you as soon as possible and you're going to get the water hooked back up all yeah. yeah i can deal with that well i just got to turn it on as long as nothing froze we're good to go <laughs> yeah i think that we would probably turn it on over the weekend so we could okay. make sure nothing froze and broke yeah yeah, because I'm not sure when they're restarting, but we'll get that. We'll get it going. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I can try it this week. It's supposed to warm right up this week, so. Yeah. Right. We'll be out in t-shirts. It's a Vermonter t-shirt weather on Wednesday. It's going to be 40. This yeah. is true. <laughs> yeah. Well, town meeting is on Tuesday, so it'd be nice to have yeah. it by then. Okay, I'll make sure. Yeah, that's right. I'll 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 make a point of making sure the water works this weekend. If there's a problem, I'll let Robin know. Thank you. Very good. And we have our, our Zoom meeting Thursday, right? Yeah, the pre-town meeting, yeah. That's on the card, the connection information. Yeah, okay. 6.30. 6 um, and Steve Freihofner will be, um, is going to be the moderator. Um, and it'll be uh, hosted by uh, Hardwick Television. So um, okay. Very good. they'll be re recording it. So if people aren't able to be there at that meeting, they can at least if they want to um, follow, you know, what was discussed at the, at the pre-town meeting. Um, or actually, it it's a, was a requirement in, in do, going to Australian ballot that there be some type of virtual um, sure. yep. meeting. So, and we, we usually do it anyway. Um, I'd be curious, kind of anticipating that there might be more people attending this than there would have been if it, it's possible we or less ball. because you've had the opportunity to vote now for a week or so. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of surprising that people, so many people have voted before they even got their town report. But yeah, have there been people voting already? Yeah. Well, it's odd because the statute requires that absentee ballots be available by February 10th, but the town report doesn't have to be available until 10 days before the meeting. So you Within those 10 days is when the information. I got you. So a lot I wondered that because I said, we got the ballots, but no report. Then there, So that's what it is. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Doesn't have to make sense, right? Yeah, I no. guess not. <laughs> yeah, because I was always would wait till I had information, but who knows? We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. There we go. So um, anything else at all to discuss while we're together here. Oh, I thought of oh. one more thing. Okay. <laughs> At school driveway. Um, it's still, people come out and this happened to me twice. They're coming out and I'm going up the road and they sling around the wall and there's not a lot of sight distance and they don't slow down. There's a lot of uh, area of snow there that could just be plowed. Mm -hmm. So you're thinking the bank, because the last time I checked it, I could see both directions really well. The bank's high enough where should they should be cleaned up. Are you in a truck? I'm in my pickup, yeah. Obviously, a car would be lower, yeah. Yeah. I'll talk to Chuck about it, clearing the bank. So I got to talk to him tomorrow. I'll make my note. You just plow a little closer to the, to the concrete wall there. Man. You know, maybe if they're coming down to clean out in front of the uh, town hall, they could just swing over there, too, with the bucket, if, they, if they're bringing the bucket down. Yeah, because I think I think for Robin's point, they should come down 
probably later this week is, or is even Monday with the loader and clean, we'll clean up, a, do a real good cleanup in front of the building there. Okay. I mean, even if the, if the tenants will move their car, there's some huge piles of snow there. I'd just soon have them clean that whole area right out. It's a big mess. Yeah. I know the understanding with the tenants is that basically that's their driveway and they're responsible for that. Yeah. But yeah, it is. But again, it will, it, we, with a bucket loader, we make one pass through there and clean that mess right yeah. up. Yep, it'd be nice. Yep. Because there's so a pile you know, of snow you know, as high as the porch roof. <laughs> if you want me to be in touch with them, I can do that. But, so. Maybe um, if, well, if we. We Let me talk day. to Chuck about what day that he can get there. I, wouldn't it make sense, Robin, if I had him clean that out Monday, that'll get it clean. Yes. As soon as or close to town meeting as we can get. And yes. if they're agreeable to that, Diana, I'll send you an email about contacting them to maybe move their cars. Okay. Yeah. I'm sure they would appreciate getting that. Yeah, clean they, they, the poor bugger. I've taught you this snowbanks are as high as the poor troops. So. Well, they're just yeah. plow, plowing, you know, shoveling their snow onto the deck there. And that's yeah. So, so it, it's not a big deal to scoop through there. It's one push. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Great. So I, I won't call Greg. I'll let you call Chuck. I'll call oh, Chuck and I'll just tell Chuck to have them go over there with the loader on Monday and okay. clean that whole area up really nice. Yep, sounds good. What else? So you said clear in front of the town hall, school drive. What was the third thing for Chuck? Goodness gracious. Uh, well, the, I guess the, in front of the uh, the apartment building too. I town hall. Okay. All right. Oh. All right. Okay. Anything else? I, Diana? I feel like mm hmm before I got on, did you mention anything about the call from Darlene Richardson? I did. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, so Diane, if you could send me, I, I know you sent me that contact information once and I oh, lost I it. <laughs> send it again, yeah, and I'll, I'll check in with her. Well, I remember the third thing I was going to talk to you about is the complaint from Wheeler Hill, which is our normal, I'll just make right. him aware that there was a grumpy person and he can... Oh, oh, right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, I sort of understand that situation. So I just drove up there still, with my pickup in three inches of snow. I didn't want to bring the fire trucks up without a chains on them, but mm -hmm. I made it. Yeah. yeah. Anything else? I feel like an auctioneer, I should say, you know, yeah. going, going. I was really happy. It was, there was reported smoke in the apartment there, but it turned out just to be odor from the wood stove next door oh, thank god okay, well, that's why i was back so quick uh -huh, good because i was having heartburn of figuring out how to put a fire out up on that hill with all the sand snow on it. <laughs> yeah yeah so hearing nothing um, motion to adjourn motion. do i hear a second i'll second that all in favor aye aye okay all right good night